made here. And we make no apology for the fact that uh, we, we, we are being very uh, demanding of the new administration in terms of what they achieve in the first 100 days. Um, I think it would be remarkable if they achieved everything we're asking, but you know, you've know, got to push and you've got to try. Um, what I do want to do, though, is, is, is draw out one of the key uh, issues that hasn't sort of been mentioned explicitly, which is the new government is going to be dominated by reducing that financial uh, deficit, that £167 uh, billion pound deficit, uh, as uh, came out in the budget uh, statement in, in March. And I think it's very important that we link uh, a lot of the comments we've said, and we've had some very uh, strong comments from the business community this evening, as well as those who understand in great depth the science and policy challenges. We have to make sure that solving uh, that financial deficit problem is uh, carried out through and with solving our environmental deficit. Uh, the fact that we have exactly the same issues that caused the financial crisis, which was effectively really uh, overreaching the banks, overreaching the capital uh, um, uh, that they had, um, and actually living beyond their means, uh, we're doing exactly that with respect to the environment at the moment. And we have to redress that balance, and we have to take the opportunity to redress that balance. Um, I would argue as even perhaps a stronger argument, because we may yet be able to do it before uh, we have to take the medicine. We could actually do it uh, as a um, cure, uh, uh, as a uh, um, alternative to actually having to take uh, take the hit and then have to try and cure it afterwards, which we all know uh, ever since Stern is going to be much more expensive. Um, after last uh, autumn's report that we did on finance and, and skills and, and renewable uh, and, and resource efficiency, um, we've had a pretty good launch pad created uh, in the last few months. Um, so I do want to um, applaud the fact that we've seen cross-party support from the Green Investment Bank. Um, we saw uh, the uh, Department of Business, Innovation and Skills come out with their recent consultation, uh, meeting the Low Carbon Skills Challenge, which uh, is, is ongoing until June, which is the first sort of... Uh, coherent attempt, I think, on the low carbon skills agenda, uh, Gavin was just mentioning, uh, and we've seen the departmental climate change plans, uh, led by DEFRA in particular on resource efficiency. So I know that there's a lot of officials in government who are trying to use those to keep some momentum to hand on to the new administration, but we then want their, uh, that new administration to really pick up the pace, uh, as we've heard from so many people this evening. Um, an example, the Green Investment Bank, I think, great, this two billion, but we've got to put it in context. Um, it's actually been calculated we need more than 70 million a day to be invested in our new energy infrastructure, in renewables and grids and energy efficiency. So that lasts, uh, by my calculation, less than a month. Well, that's a bit naughty. It's not quite that bad because Green Investment Bank is there to leverage a lot of private sector investment. But I think it still shows you that we really haven't got far. So in this report, we want to see that really moved on. We want to see an immediate consultation out on the Green Investment Bank, which has a lot of good ideas in the city on how to get it really motoring. Uh, we want to see a shadow institution established straight away. Uh, we want to have the government not wait until it can sell off the channel tunnel rail link or whatever it is that they think they're going to get the money from and actually just use the assets now to leverage off that uh, and start it uh, operating as soon as possible. We also made the suggestion um, that a number have made that if we actually move, which we've argued for some time in Aldersgate, that to the next phase of the EU ETS being entirely based on auction permits, um, it's been calculated, I think, um, David, uh, uh, he gone? David Kennedy calculated it on the Committee of Climate Change, about 40 billion will be about the revenues raised from those permits through to 2020 on an auctioning basis. Well, if we actually put that into the Green Investment Bank, we're actually beginning to get the kind of leverage that we need. And that would be an exemplar of using, uh, effectively, the uh, pain for pollution to actually fund things. Because we'd also like to see um, some evidence happening on the uh, taxation scene as well. I think it's only 7% of our taxation uh, is related to uh, environment at the moment. We'd like to see that, that really sort of double, we say in the report in the first uh, budget. And, and one suggestion in, in the report as well to look out for is improving this cross-government accountability. I mentioned the climate change plan. Do you look at the, the Treasury? Uh, the Treasury uh, very, very influential department, as we all know, probably going to be even more influential in the next government than they probably have been since uh, post-war days. Their commitment, in terms of the climate change plan, is to make sure their, the Treasury's offices save 10% of their carbon emissions. We need to make the Treasury thoroughly engaged in this. So we would suggest that the taxation and spending announcements, those unpalatable and unmentioned spending announcements that will be made in terms of cuts with the new administration should be part of the Treasury's carbon budget. So the Treasury is trying to organise those in a way which is consistent with all the things we've been hearing uh, tonight, rather than 
antagonistic to it, which remains, in my view, a risk. So, finally, I just want to say a few thank yous. I thank you again to the Mighty Group for our, being our sponsors, uh, to all of our speakers, um, to uh, um, particularly uh, uh, Victoria and to uh, Andrew of Aldersgate who've organised this event and uh, helped uh, prepare the report, and all those members and others who've helped uh, contribute to it. But most of all, to all of you coming along uh, tonight, uh, I do encourage you to read this report. You might find it more illuminating than the debate about to start at 8.30, or you might not. I think that's your judgment. Um, but I really do look for your support in making the next uh, 100 days the key turning point um, in the economic uh, fortunes and direction of the UK. I think we can make it now a turning point towards that vibrant, sustainable and inclusive economy um, that is based on low carbon, it's based on resource efficiency, and based on only taking our fair share of the planet's finite resources.